25 years after its debut, the Wildstorm imprint has burst back into the spotlight, and Warren Ellis, the genius behind the revival, is here to take us inside his latest masterpiece. The interesting thing for me was, everything I do, I move on afterwards. I never look back. Mm -hmm. Haven't in 20 odd years. And I'd been thinking lately about whether that had gotten dogmatic, that it was just, you know, yeah. a, a reflex. So I was thinking twice about that. And then Jim phones up and says, how about you revisit the Worldstorm universe that you haven't worked in since, you know, 99, 2000, unless you count planetary, which yeah. was kind of orthogonal to that whole thing. I thought, why the hell not? Just, just taking that entire body of work. And I just thought it'd be really interesting to try and pull a single thread out of that. Well, and I think the cool thing about it too is obviously the wild storm and this whole universe that you're creating is completely autonomous from the DC universe of the other comics right now. So you can really play, bring in characters, do new things with them. Was that something for you that oh, was... I set that up up yeah. front. I said, you know, if I'm doing this, I need a big old firewall around me. Yeah. Just, just let me get on with it. Yeah. Uh, and they were fine with that. So the other thing I love about your writing is there's always some major themes that I think in comic books, one of the best things about them is that you can talk about issues or creative ideas that maybe in normal conversation are a little harder to approach. So for this in particular, what were some of the themes that you really wanted to bring out? There's a lot of deep state stuff in the Wildstorm universe. And the Wildstorm surrounds or wanders around a lot of these questions of who really runs the world, mm -hmm. where the power really is, uh, and the invisible structures that we exist within. I.O., mm -hmm. um, which is if you take the birth of really the intelligence community in the 40s and 50s and imagine that it kind of metastasized like a cancer and this one intelligence operation started subsuming many of the others, it became incredibly powerful mm -hmm. until the point today it's just part of the fabric of society and nobody knows it's there. Yeah. They are essentially yeah. running the planet at this point. They have a treaty with the other great power, which is Skywatch. Mm -hmm. uh, and the director of Skywatch, Henry Bendix, has been described more than once as the manager of outer space. Io has Earth, Skywatch has everything else. They're a secret space program. Halo is Jacob Marlowe's company. It's a giant Apple Microsoft stack style tech company, but it has another mission, what Marlow calls his main project. There's a thing called the Gaian bottleneck, which says that most intelligent species will probably actually die off before they reach their potential. Marlow's main project is to get us past the Gaian bottleneck. He's there to actually uplift the human species. Mm -hmm. Uh, for reasons that he describes as altruistic, but you can't trust him. So, issue 9, and then we're going into issue 10. If someone wants to jump in, where, what kind of background can you give them? What should they know going in? Issue 9 would be kind of a weird one to jump in with, <laughs> um, but also probably quite fun. It's got a big flashback sequence in it. Um, in issue 9, we spend some time with the wild cat cat standing for covert action team run by a multimillionaire tech magnate called Jacob Marlowe who's not from around here mm -hmm. and neither's his cat uh, they're aliens and they've been here for probably at least several thousand years and we start exploring their history a little bit uh, and there's a sequence we had great fun with I just I like throwing stuff at John Davis Hunt because he can draw anything. Yeah. So I like to give him terrible tests every <laughs> issue. So we have a sword fight in Japan sometime in the 17th century. Can you talk to us about where you want to go with this, with the whole Wildstorm universe? Well, The Wildstorm, the book, is 24 issues long. Um, so you can almost think of it like, and it's broken into four six part book so you can think of it like four seasons of Game of Thrones and there is an end point but there is a plan for beyond that. So let's get into that because I know that there's going to be other series involved and spin-offs we already have one can you talk a little bit about that one so far? Michael Cray. Yep. Uh, Michael Cray was is the world's greatest killer so he's been jumped out of IO by Christine Trelane who has taken him on as part of an operation called Executive Protection Services. Yep. What he doesn't know is Christine Trelane runs Skywatch Grand Division. She is a spook for Skywatch on Earth. And 
her deal is medical treatment because Michael Cray has a tumour, but it's not a tumour. There's something in his head, yeah. um, but it may not be cancer because as you saw in the wild storm uh, and as you'll see in the first issue of Michael Cray, sometimes when he touches things, they die. So is it, I'm like, is it like nanotechnology? Oh, no, 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 no. What is it? Well, I'm not telling you. <laughs> this is DC All Access. I had to ask. I had to try. <laughs> Um, well, this has been so enlightening. I love hearing about it from your perspective and hearing about the spin-offs. Can you talk about any other characters or any of the other books that you want to do within the Wildstorm universe? We haven't announced any of them yet, um, but I don't think anyone would be surprised to know that Wildcats will be next. That's what's going on with the Wildstorm imprint, and here is a rundown of all the DC titles you can add to your pull list this week. Well, that's the news for now, but if you're behind on your Rebirth reading, you can catch up on recent adventures with the new collected editions of Batgirl and Justice League of America. See you next time.